Hi, my name is Dwayne Benefield. I'm the Chief Product Officer for TELUS, which is one of the largest Canadian communication service providers or telcos. Um, but we're, all, we're much more than that. We actually um, are a global company with operations in, in uh, 30 countries, 75,000 people outside the, of Canada. But what I'm here to speak to you about today is a revolution in smart home. So when I joined TELUS three years ago, uh, we actually had a, a very fast growing smart home security business that already had hundreds of thousands of customers, um, largely fully monitored security. So like, you know, um, every door, every window, motion detection. And it was, you know, generating very good margins and uh, growing very quickly. But it was also a closed ecosystem. Um, and it wasn't really addressing one of the biggest opportunities that I fe feel is global, is that consumers are frustrated because every time they buy a new electronic for your home, it comes with an app. It comes with a, a new username and password, and often it comes with another hub. I personally have my entire guest bedroom dresser filled with hubs, and they blink lights like your Christmas lights, right? So, um, you know, we wanted to set out to basically create the world's first device agnostic smart home platform that basically breaks down the walls of the walled gardens, and it actually enables a single pane of glass, so your smartphone, or a single voice assistant to basically manage all your connected devices that are already existing or that you choose to bring home into your new home, from whether you buy it from Amazon, you're bringing them from Carrefour or where, wherever. And it's really important because now you don't have to start over. You can use all the devices that you've already purchased, whether it's a, a thermostat or lights, blinds. And so that's what we set out to do. Uh, and we went to uh, AWS a few years ago and said, this is our vision. Can you help us build this? And we, we knew that this was a global opportunity, not just something for Canada. And so we wanted to actually to partner with the hyperscaler that could actually help us you know, develop what, is, what was necessary was some new cloud technology, as well as uh, you know, tell us making a big investment in middleware to kind of you know, realize the vision. So a year later, uh, or actually two years later now, uh, Amazon has deployed two new cloud services. Uh, one is called Ubiquitous Control, and that actually allows that single pane of glass to recognize and, and speak with the world of connected devices. And the other one is Zero Touch, which we'll demonstrate for you, allows much easier onboarding of devices that you either already have or you bring home without any new hubs, without any new usernames or, or passwords. And so what this enables now is, is not just allows consumers to seamlessly control their smart home with one pane of glass or one voice assistant, but it enables some really cool, unique value propositions that's really great for a, a CSP like yourselves. So for example, one of the first ones that we're launching and is currently in beta in Canada is our energy management service. So I'm not sure about you, but I didn't know what was actually causing so much of my energy bill, what was driving it. I found out it's my spa pump for my hot tub. Um, but we're now gonna give you visibility into what's actually driving your energy usage and then help you manage it. So if you wanna save 10% next month, we'll tell you how. We'll actually help you do it if you have a lot of smart devices, like a thermostat. We can help you manage the temperature at night. We can actually challenge you, say, hey, we have a, an energy event from three to five today because it's really hot outside. Will you allow me to you know, turn down your thermostat two degrees in return? I'll give you 500 Bravo points or reward points that you can redeem for five dollars on a Starbucks or you know, an Amazon gift card. And I'll, I'll help gamify that so I can also educate you that you shouldn't be doing your laundry at three in the afternoon because you're, that's peak energy usage, peak energy prices. So that's you know, how an energy skew works. Another one that I'm really excited about is uh, you know, aging in place. So I have 75 year old parents and they have told me they will never leave the house they're in now. They don't wanna to go to a home. They wanna basically live comfortably in their own home now without having someone live with them. So with this new technology and leveraging Gen AI, we can really help um, them age in place and enjoy their houses because we can keep them safe, keep them social and keep them active. How? Well, through a few devices like this guy up here or that little one over there or Wi-Fi sensing, we can do very accurate fall detection. Um, I can also leverage machine learning to do pattern recognition. So I will know that my mom, for example, gets out of bed on Tuesdays at 6.30 to go on a walk and Thursdays. And my dad rolls out of bed an hour later. If either of them doesn't get out of bed and they break the pattern, we can notify a caregiver, in this case me, in California and say, hey, Dwayne, you know, your mom didn't get out of bed like she normally does, you might want to call her. Or if she does fall down, we call the authorities. But it's not just safety, it's also social. So, you know, um, through data we can know that, you know, she has a son, she normally speaks to me on Wednesdays. And so it can remind her, hey, say, you know, it's uh, Wednesday, you know, want me to get, call Dwayne? It probably has access to my calendar. 
and knows that I'm open at two o'clock, I'll call Dwayne, right? So it keeps her social, but also keeps him active. So through like an aura ring, like I think he's got on, or an Apple Watch, or the new Samsung or Google Pixel watches are coming out, right? We, we can know that her heart rate has not risen to an aerobic state in two days. She needs to stay active, say, hey, Carla, her name, might be time to go on a walk, right? So, uh, you know, can I suggest a routine? There's, you know, it's a great weather, the clouds just lifted, how about you go up, you know, Yay Avenue and down, you know, Sage, right? So it's, it's really interesting what you can do now when you actually bring the power of, you know, the, the devices. They all work together now. They all speak together, uh, together with AI and data and, and uh, you know, ultimately a CSP. Because as CSPs, you know, one thing that's also unique with us is unlike a lot of these closed platforms that exist, we also manage Wi-Fi. We also manage TV services. And so one of the things you can see is that like when somebody goes in, you know, up to that ring doorbell, I can now have that video feed inside of a Netflix experience inside the television. And you can use your voice or you can use the you know, TV remote to let them in, right? So you can fully integrate your services, but you can also um, you know, leverage Wi-Fi. So you can troubleshoot Wi-Fi through that same app, right? So it's no longer just smart home, it's, it's your entire connected home. So that's kind of the, the high level overview of what we built, Smart Home Plus. So now I'm gonna turn it over um, to Nima to help demonstrate some of the functionality. Um, I just wanna do a quick demonstration of the, everything that Dwayne just touched based on and talked about. I wanna see, show you guys in reality how it might look like. This is not an app that actually gonna be in production. This is just a mock-up demo app that just showcase the functionalities and the things that you're capable of doing. One of the things that we talked about is having a visibility into the entire home, being getting the, all the data that in from all these different data in the house. I have around 50 devices around the house here. I'm getting around 180 entities coming out of them. These devices, uh, some of them might be do multiple actions like uh, motion sensor, illumination, temperature sensor. So if I go to my main dashboard, you can see that is a really busy and you can see all kind of data that is coming through. Some of these data are based on energy that we just talked about. You can see the consumption of the energies. Some of these data are the health data that is coming through from my ring. Some of the data are, are unknown. Those are the data that did get, not give consent for it to be published through the app. On top of that, you can see the different type of streaming coming through from different type of cameras. Uh, we do have uh, devices that you can control them. For example, I can do the kitchen island controller, turn it on and off easily. I can also create specific dashboards that you can use to look at your health data and mo uh, monitor them. As we talked about, aging in place is one of the critical things. If my, someone falls down in the house and the, they require help, we have Astro, little guy over there, is a small companion robot by Alexa. It can come actually to your location that you have fallen down, detects your face from the facial recognition. If you're not um, con conscious, you can contact the authorities, the first responders. As soon as that happens, because we have visibility into the health data, the first responders get an uh, exact condition you're in. They can come to your house, you have a smart lock, they don't have to break into your home. They can unlock the door automatically. They know exactly where you are because we do have zone detection, so they don't have to search the home to find you. This reduces the time from the incident all the way to the response time. Other use cases is Gen AI. Uh, using Gen AI, it's so super easy for you to be able to say it's a bit dark in here. The reason I'm typing is too loud in here, so it won't pick up my voice, but you can communicate with it directly. I said it's a bit dark in here. The Gen AI actually recognizes what is a bit mean, what does dark mean, and what is here. If you notice, it only turns these lights on. You understand that this is, these are the lights closest to me where I'm actually requesting the command. And he knows it's a little dark, not his darkness. So he turns on only a few lights to make it a little, little brighter. Cross across systems, this is one of those platforms that we can use multiple uh, voice assistants like Alexa, Google, Siri. I have those devices at the edge of this site so I can't really go to it to uh, apply the commands. But you can do the control of all these devices because we're breaking these barriers between different ecosystems and you have control over all of this. The last thing I want to show up as part of the demo is how do we get to this page? How do we get so many devices easily onboarded? Uh, we are at AWS, we have in a uh, suite of zero touch technology to help you to onboard these new devices. 
if I go back here, all I have to do to onboard this device is push one button and plug it in. But on the box, it says it requires an app, it requires a hub, and requires a light bulb. Out of the three, I only have one, so there's 33% chance of uh, working. But it works 100% of the time. So I'm gonna do one click on the dashboard and plug this in. And all you have to do, wait a few seconds and you see the device is online and you can start using it. You can actually control the device right away, change the color. You can actually set it to a specific areas like living room. Um, as soon as you add it to the living room, we actually give you the capability to be added to the routines that already exist for the home. So you don't have to go and find where are the routine sections, where is the, where, which light is the light that I just added, figure out how to add it to the routines. It's already done for you. Why telcos are in a unique position to offer this to the customers? We understand the customers, they have multiple streaming services, they have multiple subscriptions, but they all have one thing in common, which is the internet. There's a single internet in the homes. So by providing the routers and internal connectivity and have visibility into the entire home, you can have a value add on to the customers to be able to take advantage of these technologies for their uh, use cases for security, energy, for healthcare, and use generative AI to do, be proactive rather than reactive to the actions that happens in the home. Um, what I mean by being proactive, if you notice, for example, some of these devices that are offline and not available, um, you can actually, if I'm trying to use a light, sometimes I forget what is the brand, what app do I need to use to fix this issue. With generative AI, because you have visibility into the entire home, you can actually be proactive. Hey, I noticed your light is not working anymore. Do you want me to restart it for you? Do you want me to reboot it? Let me give you some recommendations on how you can fix it before you're actually thinking about doing that. By doing that kind of analytics on the entire home, you can actually reduce the number of the calls that goes to the call centers and reduce the cost for the call centers and it will be beneficial to the telcos.